They sent out the kids for the gun control lobby, quickly, getting paid by celebrities and held up by the Women's March. But now, David Hogg has been used up for TV time and magazine covers, spit out by the people who claim to hold him up so high. So let's move on to the next topic, shall we? Better luck next time. School safety. A hot topic after many tragic school shootings. Ideas started flowing about how to better secure the schools. Metal detectors, see-through backpacks, limited and secure entry points. These were combated with talks of making schools too much like prisons, and clear backpacks are an invasion of privacy and against our children's rights. Forget the irony of the rights argument while attempting to simultaneously remove gun rights. This spits in the face of underprivileged students who have had to deal with this for years due to gang violence. It is not new nor unique for inner city schools to implement metal detectors, pat-downs, see-through backpacks, or multiple armed guards at funneled entrances. For Democrats though, this already in place system is somehow too strict. Another critically injured as some parents charge it was too little too late. The kids were asking for metal detectors last year because I know that somebody who didn't go to the school got in the building with a weapon. So they've been asking for metal detectors since last year. Year. They were told no. It wasn't until somebody got killed that they brought the metal detectors. Groups say detection devices create a hostile environment, stigmatize students, make them feel like they aren't trusted. But many parents want the protection. If you're going to have high school kids and junior high school kids with little kids, have a metal detector. Know what they're bringing into school. This don't make no sense that you got to worry about your kid. I think if there was metal detectors, what happened yesterday would have never happened. Care about all of the students, please. All of the children that had no choice but to live here and now call it home. But once an agreement on DACA was coupled with an increased spending budget and building the border wall, this was quickly deserted. The president asked them several times to come up with a new plan before the deadline, but DACA was never heard of again. The integrity of the elections was highly talked about leading up to the 2016 election. Will Trump respect the results if he loses, or will he claim it was rigged against him? President Obama scoffed. It's impossible. Uh, of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? The federal government doesn't run the election process. States and cities and communities all across the country, they're the ones who set up the voting systems and the voting booths. And uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory that is... Uh, being propagated uh, across the country, including in places like Texas, uh, uh, where typically it's not Democrats who are in charge of uh, voting booths. Um, that's ridiculous. Quickly after Trump won, it was Jill Stein of the Green Party who sought a recount. Followed by millions in donations, the recount was called off. But where did the money go? Since then, the discussion has been the Russians. The Russians affected the election, the Russians swayed it, included with Trump, so it's no longer impossible that the election was rigged? The Russians did try to affect the elections by buying Facebook ads and making groups, 3,000 ads to be specific, totaling $100,000, 13 indictments of Russians that did little other than stir up some pots on both sides, getting people to show up to both pro-Hillary and pro-Trump events, or just rant and rave on Facebook. Still, this is an attack on democracy, and the veracity of the voting process must be protected, except when it comes to something as basic as voter ID though. The defense? It's not fair to minority voters? Well, some videos point to the facts that are unbelievably sad. Progressives not thinking poor, black, or Spanish people have access to the internet or forms of identification. ID, normally? You carry ID around? Yes, I have state ID. Do you carry ID? Yes, I do. Do you know anybody, who, any black person who doesn't carry ID? No. Everyone that I know has an ID. Why would they think we don't have ID? <laughs> That's a lie. Why would they say that? Do you have ID? Yes. Because I have my ID and my friends have their ID, so like, we know what we need to carry around. Yeah, everybody that I know have ID. Like, that's one of the things you need to walk around with New York with, an ID. Do you know any black adult who does not have ID? No, I don't. Is it a weird thing to even say that? Yes, it is. What is this, some, some type of uh, trick candy camera? I like know, that? right? So on one hand, the voting process is so coveted, we must look into machine hacking, foreign interference, and Trump is insane if he thinks the election results can be tampered with. A year later, the election must have been rigged since Trump won. The very notion of a simple presenting of an identification card to ensure voter authenticity is somehow evil. A very odd hill to die on, wouldn't you say? 
children are locked in cages. Oh, those photos were actually from uh, the Obama years. Well, children are in prison-like conditions. Uh, actually, they kind of have like internet and video games and it kind of looks like a school. Stop separating families at the border. They are only separated if they cross illegally. If they enter at the legal entry point and claim asylum, they're kept together. Well, they should still be together if they cross illegally. Well, many children are at risk of child trafficking and people do bring them across the border who aren't their parents. There's also the argument that somebody who commits a crime who's an American citizen, they don't get their children to come with them to jail. Trump is a monster who's doing this on purpose. No borders, no walls, no America at all. No fascism, no Trump, he and Pence must go. Noticing any recurring themes? Children and minorities? Why? Guilt. The guilt of seeing a child suffer. The guilt of not wanting to be racist or hateful. But that is, when you dig into these stories, guilt is all that it ever is. The guns are only a problem in some situations. Massive shooting numbers in Chicago, DC, New Orleans, and it goes on. These deaths for some reason do not matter. Just a part of life just numbers. The fact that there exists strict gun control in these areas doesn't matter either. There's no real way to score political points out of a place that has supposed gun control run by Democrats. There's no real boogeyman to blame, just our own DNC policies. School safety is only important in places where you can enlist teenagers to do your bidding. These kids in DC who have friends die month after month from gang violence or from MS-13 in the Northeast? That doesn't matter. Forget they've had metal detectors and clear backpacks for years. Their stories about gang violence with illegally obtained firearms won't get us anywhere. Don't you care about the poor children of DACA, 72% of which are actually over the age of 20 with even more ages 18 and 19? Three quarters may not be children, but isn't the point that they were children in 2012 when this started? Do they actually care about those children that are actually children? Well, they wanted full amnesty, but given any pushback, they abandoned it completely. They wouldn't even take a pathway to citizenship deal. So much for standing with the dreamers. So the next time either party tells you, please, just trust us. This is the most important thing right now, and the other side, they're evil for doing it, okay? Just wonder why it leaves the news cycle just hours or days later. Did they get it wrong, or are they just not making any money or political progress with that story? It just doesn't hold any value. They aren't playing basketball where you need to take smart shots and not just throw anything at the hoop. They're actually playing a game of hockey, where any shot on net, good or bad, is encouraged, because sometimes even bad shots will bounce in and get you a goal. I don't think I need to tell you that treating human beings as pawns, as numbers, when it comes to running a country or a society, will inevitably lead to revolt.